and I'll make the prompt select your value. Because again, the, the prompt here is more for the user, so I want it to be really clear to them what they're doing here. Okay, select your value. It will be a text data type. And then under default, I'm going to give it a default value. And then we're going to come back to manipulating the available values here the last few minutes. So first things first, I'm going to give this a default value. My default value, I'm going to hard code in here, and I'm going to make it the internet sales amount. So you guys can just watch this part. So I'm going to hard code in a measure name. Now it does have to be an MDX speak here. So I'm actually feeding it a little bit of MDX language. And because that is the uh, measure value that I want to show by default whenever a user runs the report, that's the default measure they're, they're going to see. And then we're going to worry about at the end about how we can make that dynamic and have where they can select it from a drop down box. I have two other parameters I want to create. The next parameter I want to create is uh, one that I'll also do some hard coding in, but that's okay. You'll see, you'll see why I want to do that. This one is where I'm going to allow them to decide how many months to look back. Because right now, I've hard coded it to look back 12 months. Well, I want them to have a little bit of flexibility where they can say, oh, well, you can default it to 12 months if you want, but I really want to have the flexibility where I can look back to the previous month or the last six months or two months or three months or whatever it may be. I want to give them the flexibility to be able to change that. So to do that, I'm going to parameterize that as well. I'll create a parameter here called, let's call it um, lag month is fine. And I'll say, so for the users, select uh, months back. You know, you can name it whatever you want. Whatever makes sense to them. They'll probably come up with a prompt name for you. Okay. Uh, now this one is going to also be text because it's going to pass into our string value. I know it seems like an integer, but it's going to pass into a string uh, query that we provided. And then we're going to give it some available values that we're going to hard code in. Because I don't want my users to just be able to type in whatever they, I don't want them to be able to type in like 100 months back because they might get results that they wouldn't expect. So I'm going to limit them a little bit to the number of months they can look back. I'll tell them they can look back one, two, three, six months, or maybe 12 months back. So I'm limiting them a little bit, but it's more of a control to make sure that they don't get out of hand with how they're using the report. Okay. So just think of this parameter value that I'm hard coding here as the possible numbers they can look back. And whatever value they select out of this drop-down box that we're creating will be filled into this parallel period calculation here. It'll be replacing this guy. Okay. All right, so I'll hit OK. We got one more parameter I'm going to create. OK, and that parameter is going to be the start date of our uh, range that we look at, look at. OK, so I'm going to call this the start date parameter. And I'll say select a start date. OK, this one's going to be a date time. OK. And then I'll also give this one a default value as well. So the default value for this one, I'm using the AdventureWorks cube here just so you guys can replicate it when you go back to work. So I'm going to have to give it a date that's a little bit further back of January 1st, 2007. So you guys should be able to replicate this uh, going back to your AdventureWorks cube. Okay, so all I've done so far is I've created parameters. If I preview this, I'll see parameters, but they're not tied to anything at this point. They're not tied and they're not forced into the, re the report data set. My next step is to force the report data set to actually use these parameters. And I've pre-written the query here for you to save on time, but I will walk through it with you. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this into my report. Okay, so in my report data set, what I'm going to do is instead of going to the query designer, I'm actually going to make this query into an expression. So instead of having a standard query, I'm going to make the query based off of an ex a reporting services expression that we write. So I'll simply hit the expression button here. And I'm going to replace the uh, data set that you have here with a dynamic one that actually passes in the uh, new query or new parameter values that we just created a moment ago. I'll tell you what, I'm actually going to walk through this one with you so you guys can see every bit of it and it doesn't... Uh, there's no time lapse here as far as me pasting in a completed query. So what I'm going to do to make this work 
again, is to make this a expression. So if I'm going to make this into an expression, I need to have an equal sign at the beginning, right? And I also need to have double quotes because I really have this really big literal string that I'm trying to pass into it, right? This whole thing is going to be a string value. Now, the best way I've found to do this is really to make every line into a string and just concatenate it all together because it makes it a little easier to read. So what I usually do is I'll come through and I will create a string for every line of code here. And I just do that more for myself to be able to read it later. Okay, so all I'm doing again is just concatenating a bunch of lines of code together. And then we'll get into the parameter piece here in a moment. Okay. All right. So my, that's my standard query here I've written that I've just made into a string. That's all I've done to it so far. But now what I want to do is replace some of these values that I have here, like this internet sales amount, with a parameter that I've just created. So I'll go under my parameters, find my measure name, and replace my measure name parameter with the internet sales that was hard coded in here previously. Now, remember I have this literal string, so I'm going to need to concatenate these things together and also pass in a few extra double quotes to be able to get it just right. Let's just try it like this so it's less confusing. Now, you'll notice I had the string to value in here previously. That string to value I, I wrote in here ahead of time so that it could take this string and turn it into a, a measure for us. Okay, so we've provided this measure name. And then the next thing that we're going to do is replace the number of months that we're going to look back with my lag month parameter. So I'll take my lag month parameter, double click on that guy, and then I'm going to move my double quotes onto the other side of that, just like so. Okay. So all I did there was I moved my double quotes on the other side because I really have this number that's the end of the line here. So just imagine this parameter as a number. I'm going to look back one month, two months, three months, 12 months, six months, whatever the user selects. 